Hello and good morning. It's Phil Thatch and I'm here this morning at the Chickamauga Dam, which I think you should be able to see behind me over there. And I've brought the R6 Mark II and the 200 to 800. The R6 Mark II is probably my best autofocusing camera. So I've brought that combination out here. And this morning there's probably a hundred seagulls, probably ring-billed gulls mostly. And they are flying around in the tailwaters of the dam. The spillways are flowing over there. And the generators are running as well. So there's lots of fish um, for these gulls to be fishing for. They're like, just imagine they're osprey instead of gulls. That's kind of the way they're behaving. And I'm going to try to get some shots of them. It's cold this morning, right about 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero Celsius. I'm using electronic first curtain shutter because there's a lot of man-made things in the background like that coffer dam over there and all sorts of other stuff. And if I'm panning to follow these birds and I make the shot with something like that in the background, if I use the electronic shutter, even though it's pretty fast readout speed on this R6 Mark II, you'll still see rolling shutter and things leaning. So going to electronic first curtain today. Here's my first shot of the morning that I liked enough to share, and it's one of my favorites of the entire day. You can see the settings up here in the top left. I'm at 1 1600th of a second wide open at F9, 800 millimeters, and ISO 8000. This is a ring build goal, and it's flying relatively close to the dam, and I like the way I caught it right in between two spillways. I think that turned out really beautiful, and the bird is nice and sharp, and this is a full adult ring build goal. When they're younger, they don't look quite as nice, in my opinion. So the adults look better, and I love their yellow eyes, and I love the way this shot turned out. Here's a younger ring bull gull. This is a hover. They come up, and when they see a fish, they'll hover a little bit, and then they'll kind of dive after it. Here's another in flight. This is an adult. I'm at 1 50th in this one. Here's another ring bull gull. It's been hovering, and it's just about to stab for a fish. And another in flight shot, 800 millimeters. Lots of man-made stuff as they're working just across the river from where I am on the new lock for the Chickamauga Dam. And that's the construction of the lock going on in the background there. You can see an out of focus in-flight gull in the background. This gull is turning and diving. I think it's spotted a fish. They don't always go all the way to the water. Sometimes they'll cut sharp and then realize that there's no fish by the time they get closer. This one's doing the hover. They'll do a cut like that one in the previous picture did, and then they'll come down and hover for just a second until they get their eyes right on the fish, and then they'll do kind of a dive. Not as much as an osprey does, but kind of a dive. And then, sometimes, they get a fish, like this bird has gotten a fish in this one twenty-five hundredth of a second shot. There's another in-flight shot of a nice adult ring-billed gull, ISO 640, and another one probably in that same pass, 665 and 668. Yeah, that's in the same pass, I would say. I was shooting the fastest shutter speed in electronic first curtain. Here's a younger ring-billed gull that has gotten a fish. I don't like their eyes as much when they're juveniles. They're not as bright yellow as the adults, but it's nice to see one catch a fish. And here's more of an adult. It's caught a fish and has just come up out of the water, and every time they would fly out of the water, they would fly away from me instead of towards me, which I didn't like. But on this one, I caught it kind of banking, and you can see its eyes in focus, and you can see lots of drops of water where it's just come out of the water in this 1 2500th of a second shot. Another ring build gull, this one's slightly younger than that last one, and it has caught a fish. And here's another one that's coming out of the water with a fish. The gulls were doing well in terms of fishing this morning. I love the contrast in this shot. This is the coffer dam on the near side of the lock. It's still all the way across the river, and the shade of the dam was causing this shadow across and you got these beautiful bright colors of the rusted area of the coffer dam. This is water flowing out from inside that area and a younger ring bill gull hovering about to catch a fish or attempt to catch one. This is two shots in the same flyby, 1 2500th of a second of a ring bill gull. There's cranes way across the river and this crane is out of focus and you can see an American flag on this crane and as the bird continued to fly it went past another crane and another out-of-focus American flag in the background. Same bird, same flyby, two cranes and two flags. This one's a little more up close, another 1 2500th of a second shot. And this one I got all the way up to 1 3200th of a second, and this ended up being my last shot, but it's probably the sharpest of the in-flight shots. This 
1/32 a second. Still only needed 800 ISO. I had really good light, and the light was at my back if I had the angle right on the bird. If I turned to my right to photograph a bird, then the light wasn't good. But if the bird would be a little bit to my left as I was sitting there on the bank of the river, the light was good, as you can see in this shot. When I came out here to the dam this morning to do photography, it wasn't gulls that I was after. I actually was coming here to do great blue heron photography because they're often here at the dam and you can get really close. And I wanted to just see if I could get a sharp picture with this lens. I've been really struggling to get pictures that I consider to be super tack sharp with this lens lately. Uh, a great example of that is when Heather and I went to the Black Point Wildlife Drive in Florida and she got uh, sharper pictures than me. We were both using R7s. I was using this lens, the 200-800, and she was using the 100-500, and her shots were consistently sharper than mine. So that was disconcerting about this lens. And in the videos that I made after that video, it seemed like my shots weren't as sharp as they usually are. And so I kind of quit using this lens, honestly. And then I did a comparison and I graded this lens uh, not very high in terms of sharpness. But I got to thinking, you know, when I first got this lens, I wasn't using the R7 with it. I was using the R6 Mark II. And I made a shot of a white-throated sparrow from the blind Pretty far away though, it wasn't close on my perches, and it's a 1 80th of a second shot that I made, and I love that shot. It's nice and sharp, looks really good. And another shot that I made with this lens and the R6 Mark II was up at the Hiawassee Wildlife Refuge, and I even had the teleconverter on for that, the 1.4 teleconverter. So I've made a couple of shots that I'm really happy with in terms of sharpness with this lens, but it just seems like I'm not able to get as many sharp shots with this lens as I would like. So that's why I came out today. I thought I'd shoot those great blue heron, but they're breeding right now, so they're not down there below the dam. I know where they go to breed. I know where the, the stand of trees is that they build their nests on the top of, but you can't get a good shot of them. So I decided to just kind of walk around. I'm actually on the Tennessee River Park behind Chattanooga State Technical Community College right now, and got the Tennessee River right there and you've got this stand of trees that's on the riprap going down to the Tennessee River and a lot of times you can find some birds so let's see if I was able to get some sharp shots today with the 200 to 800 on the R6 Mark II. Okay so now I'm in electronic shutter mode I've switched from electronic first curtain and now I'm concentrating on songbirds and in the river park area there at the dam and down river from the dam there are these little lights and they have a round top and they're they're about knee high or maybe thigh high and they're along the path these northern mockingbirds like to sit on top of them and look down at the grass for something to eat and i got a shot of this mockingbird and it's pretty sharp it is pretty sharp i don't have too many complaints about the sharpness of this shot with this 200 to 800 lens at 1 1600th of a second Here's a Canada goose. You often see Canada goose hanging around there at the river park. And here is an example of one. I got a shot of this one. This is at a tree just down river from the dam near the railroad tracks. And this is a puffed up because it was cold this morning and sleepy looking song sparrow that I photographed in this tree. Still further as I walk down, this is a, an old post that looks like it's been sawed off and there's a squirrel on top of it enjoying some breakfast at one eight hundredth of a second. Still making my way down the river and I found this robin in the grass and I sat down in the grass myself to make this shot. And you can see, if you look really close, there's water drops on the bird and there's water droplets on the tops of the grass. And the shot is fairly sharp. It's not extraordinarily sharp, but it's acceptably sharp. This bird is an invasive species here in the United States. This is an English house sparrow, beautiful bird. The, this is a male and I enjoy photographing them. I don't like it when they go into my birdhouse and break the eggs of the bluebirds or the tree swallows, which they're known to do, but otherwise they're beautiful birds. Oh, I found the upside down bird as I got closer down near Chattanooga State. This is the white breasted nuthatch. It's very bad light and heavily cropped. It did turn out fairly good, could be a little sharper, but it turned out fairly good. This is a downy woodpecker high in a tree, but I was able to get this shot. The light was tricky 
and I thought I had overexposed its belly, but once I got it home, I found that I didn't, and this red indicates that it's a male. This is right beside the path, the concrete path. There's these rocks, and they're a little bit bigger than a softball, and I sat down on the path and took photographs of this song sparrow that was milling around for food for longer than I should have, and I finally got one that was kind of decent. Oh, it's my favorite bird for this time of the year. It is the ruby crowned kinglet, and this is a shot of it in a tree, and it was probably 10 or 15 feet up in the tree, but it was almost eye level because the tree is down the bank from the walking path right by Chattanooga State in this 1 250th of a second shot, 800 millimeters wide open at F9 and ISO 100. This is the concrete path right here, and this cardinal was rummaging around near the path, and I think I used a garbage can to brace myself and hide behind as I made this shot of the cardinal. And now I'm making my way back to the car, and it's another mockingbird on another one of those lights that's along the path. And this shot's relatively sharp, and I made another shot of the same bird, but I moved over a little bit. The background's a little different, and this one is extremely sharp. This may be the sharpest shot of the day and it's getting into 100 to 500 sharpness territory, this shot is, at 1 640th of a second. And the last shot of the day, as I almost had made it back to the car, it's another northern mockingbird, and this one is in a tree that has some nice red berries to add to the color in this 1 800th of a second shot, also at 800 millimeters, also wide open at F9. Thanks for joining me today here at the Chickamauga Dam where I made photographs with the R6 Mark II and the 200 to 600. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, reach down and give me a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. If you want to see some more stuff like this, subscribe and hit the bell. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.